Hey everyone. So this is a continuation of the last tutorial of compositing CGI. So in the last tutorial we went through the process of uh, camera matching, setting up the HDR with image-based lighting, and using a V-Ray material wrapper to create uh, a matte surface to capture all the lighting information in order for us to actually composite this uh, into a nice uh, final render, right? So this is what we're trying to achieve as a final result. Um, which is a full composite with ambient occlusion uh, and the original backplate uh, and here's where we're at now. So right now you can see that we just have the rendered spheres and then we're capturing the lighting information uh, from the matte surface of the uh, of the ground plane. Alright great so now that we're happy with this let's go ahead now and open up Maya's uh, render setup. So that's this icon right here and you can see we have the render setup and what we're going to do uh, is just create a new layer, right? I'm just going to call this AO layer, right? Now there are definitely a bunch of different ways of doing uh, and rendering AO. You can use render elements, you can um, you know, duplicate files, you can um, just do a bunch of different things but this setup um, process is just using render setup, all right? Uh, so now that I have AO layer created, I want to create a collection and this is, I typically just call it my geo collection and I'm going to add my uh, shader balls here. So I'm going to uh, control click select them uh, and we can just move these down maybe so they're a little bit easier to select in the future or I'll move them up. Wow. Okay. Or not. Uh, I'll just move them here so you can see shader ball one, two, three. I just middle mouse drag them over. And then once I do that, I do create material override. And then this is going to be my AO material. All right. So let's go into our hyper shade and create our uh, AO material. So I will just begin by using a V-Ray light material, okay? And I'm gonna actually just, I'll put this so it cleans up this. Uh, so AO light mat. So what the light, light material does, it, it ignores all lighting. It's essentially fully self-illuminated, um, which is what we want for occlusion, right? Now, of course, we need to actually plug in what's called the V-Ray dirt or the actual occlusion texture. So in the color slot, hit the dialog box and then we have V-Ray Dirt right here at the top, right? Und or it's under V-Ray 2D Textures, wherever you want to find it. All right, uh, what I typically end up using, so occlusion color, that's fine. Uh, the radius is based off the radius and size of your object. Uh, I ended up using, right, because this is uh, 10 centimeters. Uh, these are fairly large, larger objects. Uh, I think I ended up going pretty high up to 50. And then distribution is you know, how it spreads uh, on the, along the model, uh, you know, and, and fall off is how tight um, and, and how far that goes out as well. Uh, now, I, I typically set my sub to 16, honestly, max. Um, so that should be good there. And I, you can get some pretty good results with using Y bias, but for now, I'll, I'll just leave those off. Now, if I go back to windows here so that's it for the material now we want to make sure to grab that material and bring that over to the override material right so we have AO light mat uh, which we can see is composed of the light material with the V-Ray dirt and we're middle mouse drag this over the word override material uh, if you don't do that if you just bring it here it looks like it does it, but if you click on and off, you can see that it doesn't, just an annoying little bug. So just do it over the word and you can see that it properly connects it. And then um, once we're good there, what I'm gonna do is uh, hit the eyeball, right? And then you can see that uh, we have this, right? You can start to see that it applied that. and. Don't worry, right? This is just a layer, so it's just applying this material override to this to this layer, which is the power of layers. Um, you can set up like another layer if you wanted to set up like mat IDs and material IDs and uh, all sorts of things. Now, the other thing I need to do is just make sure that the plane is also in here. But 
I want to make sure that we render, we get the effect of the AO on the shader balls from the ground, but I don't actually want the ground because we're getting plenty of lighting information from uh, the V-Ray material wrapper in the last one, in the, in the main render. So what I want to do is select this plane, a ground plane, okay? And make sure you're in AO layer, right? And under the plane shape, under render stats here, expand render stats, and go to primary visibility and right click create absolute override for visible layer and you can see that it adds a new collection here so just make sure you do this at this level here if you don't it'll create a sub layer and um, mess up the order of operations and whatnot and then disable primary visibility you can see that it does that here this is tied to this override and it's only applying it to the render layer so you can see that if I go back to the main uh, layer here, uh, it, it won't apply that. It's just applying it here to the AO layer. All right, great. So then uh, we go ahead and hit this, and then we go ahead and do a quick render. And now we're starting to get some nice AO. And then we can render that out and get some good results for compositing. All right. So here we have uh, a pretty good result, right? From our master layer, our beauty layer. And then you can see our background result uh, if I enable that. And then you can see here with our AO, we're gonna get some good depth out of our model here. Um, once you're happy with that, you wanna do your final render, right? So I'm gonna go back to our master layer and under V-Ray, you know, I'll set this to bucket. I'll make these smaller bucket uh, size. This is just the size of the actual render buckets. I typically like to use 24. GI, uh, if th these are like test renders, uh, you know, I'd set it to high, then very high for the final. Light cache, you know, I set the 1500. Uh, and then if I go to render elements, I definitely want to make sure to use denoiser. So add that and it's going to give us a nice clean effects result. And then uh, crank up your resolution. Uh, I ended up going with 2000 pixels. Uh, and then I'll use that for the final, All right? So uh, bump up the resolution, uh, threshold, that should be fine. If you want, if it's going to take a little bit longer, you can, of course, increase this to maybe 0.02 since you're using denoiser. And bump, crank up GI, and then use uh, denoiser. All right. Those are the settings that I use. And then what I ended up getting here, you can see, uh, you can see 2200 pixels. Took about 12 minutes on my machine, um, which is a six score i7. So that's not too bad. Uh, AO is really fast. It, it took it about a minute 45. So once you're happy with the final render, right, you can see that we're, you know, everything is coming together really nicely even here. So I want to save this out. Uh, if you didn't use the render settings uh, here, uh, that's fine. If you didn't use the settings to uh, tell it where to save, no batch render, but that's fine. We can just right click here and save the image. Uh, so we can call this beauty render, right? Which contains all the lighting and information. PNGs, great. Uh, I'm actually gonna put that in another folder and I'm just gonna call it comp. I'm gonna go to my AO and I'm gonna go ahead and save that comp. And I'll call this AO render. Great. So I just saved out the two passes. Uh, and what I want to do is just go ahead now back to this here, comp, and I want to bring that into Photoshop, all right? So uh, you can use whatever you want to use for editing, um, compositing, or what have you, uh, but I, yeah, I'm just going to be using Photoshop. So I have a, uh, our beauty render here, oh, nope, not there, and I just want to bring it up over here. 
Okay, so you can see, uh, so far so good. Then I want to bring in my AO renderer. Great. And then I want to make sure to bring in the retouched image, right? In this case, I have it in my source images folder. And then I want the bus depot backdrop retouch and just drag that in here. Now you see why we set up this to be the same aspect ratio. So we don't have to do any cropping or anything like that. Everything's looking good. All right. So I have AO, my beauty, and I'm going to make a folder. So we have AO render, and I'll call this one beauty. Just keep things clean. And we, of course, want to multiply our AO. So now you can see if I turn that on and off, the nice detail that we're getting uh, here, if I really kind of zoom in, this is a nice high res image now, right? It's just giving us a lot of good detail out of our renders. Um, now, if it's too strong, depending on what you're rendering, you can always tone it down a bit, maybe set it to 85, 80, 60 sometimes, whatever you want to do, right? Um, and you can see, turning it on and off, looks good, looks like it belongs. And then uh, just the last bit, I typically like to just do a nice contrast adjustment on just the spheres, right? Or just our CG. You can see if I do that, uh, and it's a little bit of Photoshop info, uh, I only want to affect what's in this group here, which is why I created this group folder, right? And I can call this CG layer. And if I right click this and create clipping mask, it's going to just apply it. So you can see now it's going to give us that contrast adjustment just on the spheres, which is what we want. And I think to really kind of bring it all together, uh, you can kind of see that it's kind of this afternoon sunny. There's a lot of warmth. There's a lot of warm colors here. Uh, so just to put it all together, I'm going to throw like a, a nice quick photo filter. Uh, and you can see that it makes it look like it's all was shot with one photo. Uh, with one filter and again it really brings it all together so you can see before it looks good but right through a little bit of retouching really i would say minimal amount of retouching we were able to really kind of bring this all uh, together so um, there you have it so just going through the process of uh, uh, compositing cg uh, with photography uh, if you got any questions put it in the comments below uh, reach out uh, let me know but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.